I'd like to start with a um, a prayer. This is um, was given to me by a client who is a descendant of uh, Lakota Sioux tribe. And so just kind of settle in and if it helps to close your eyes, you can do that. This will be in kind of our attunement. Wankan Tonka, great mystery. Teach me how to trust my heart, my mind, my intuition, my inner knowing, the senses of my body, the blessings of my spirit. Teach me to trust these things so that I may enter the sacred space and love beyond my fear and thus walk in balance with the passing of each glorious sun. According to the native people, the sacred space is the space between exhalation and inhalation. To walk in balance is to have heaven spirituality and earth physicality in harmony. So let's just feel that balance as we begin our day. So the title of my presentation is Vicarious Trauma and the Wounded Healer. And we, we have a you know, fairly small group here. So I'm just going to interact with you as much as I can. How many people know something about vicarious trauma? Like they have some sense of it. Okay. So I think most all of us. And so feel free to ask a question. I'm, I'm going to start fairly simply. And my thought is I'll talk just a little bit and then have us do an exercise and we can use that for discussion. And I'm open to questions and things. So I've just been teaching about vicarious trauma. So it, it was on my mind and I thought it would be a good thing to share. I think we all are, as healers, are affected by those we work with. We pick up, we feel the kinds of feelings, the kinds of experiences that our clients talk about. And of course, we take in those kinds of experiences with people we live with and interact with. And of course, we can reflect on our own um, families of origin growing up. And I would imagine each of us could have a feel or several kinds of feels of what it was like growing up in our own families. So... Vicarious trauma refers to trauma that is held in a person's body, but that is not derived from our own life experiences. So I think um, in growing up in our own families, there may have been times where the parents or others we lived with had depression or anger or some mental health issues or just ways that they expressed or didn't express emotions that um, were overwhelming and or just kind of split off in the sense that they weren't really able to express what was going on, but it was felt in some way. And when this happens, especially when we're young, I mean, little children want to be part of, belong to the family and take on and help in some ways. And especially when we're young, we can't do much of the physical labor, but emotionally, we can take in a lot. And so those things that are sort of split off or not processed by others that we live with are things that can affect us and that we take in. We maybe 
carry our mother's depression or our father's anger, at least in my case. And there was a time in my life where I did a lot of focusing around my relationship with my mother. And I could really get a sense of like, oh, this is mine. This is where I can feel sad or depressed. But there's this whole other quality of what I might call depression that was really my mother's. And I can sense how that was for her and how she carried it and how I helped her carry it. And to make those differentiations of what's mine and what is someone else's can be very helpful. And, you know, then to think about our work with clients, we take on a lot. We hear a lot of stories. We can maybe feel how it was after a particular session and we, we carry that, or maybe we feel it at the end of the day or the end of the week, or we just are, you know, noticing that we have this kind of uncomfortable, bit overwhelming, shaky feeling, and we can't really put our finger on, why is this here? Why am I feeling this way? Like, because my day's going pretty well, or it's a Saturday morning, and I don't understand this. And if I take a little time to pause and sense, oh, that's what I've been carrying this week. Oh, that's the stuff about that session. Oh, that's the worry I have for this client or situation. I mean, just this weekend, and I don't know that this is vicarious, there's just maybe my concern, but I text a couple of clients because I wanted to check in and see how they were doing. And that's my way of carrying some sort of concern or worry. So we can look both back at our own. I mean, vicarious trauma can happen anytime. But I think we certainly, in the focusing world, we often talk of something called clearing a space and background feelings. I think sometimes our background feelings are some of those beliefs we have, a sense of how we do carry certain trauma, certain things that weren't processed by our parents. I have a little something, and actually, I got this, Randy wrote this down, Randy, raise your hand, Randy's a friend, and we've taught a lot together, but she wrote this in something that I included in um, my training recently, it's from Ann Weiser Cornell, and um, Anne writes, we can carry in our own bodies the stuck emotional states of our parents and other caregivers. This happens if two factors are present. We lived with or at least interacted with the person when we were children. And two, they themselves did not acknowledge or process their traumatized material. And she gives a, a says a little something about something that Jenlin responded to. I remember hearing Jean Jenlin respond to a woman who said, I feel like I am a Holocaust survivor, but I wasn't. My parents were. How could I be feeling their trauma? They never talked to me about what they went through. Jean's reply to this woman was, they didn't have to talk about it. You lived with their bodies. So we carry expectations, we carry longings. Um, you know, how many of us have a parent or parents who really wanted to do something, like they had a dream and it was unfulfilled, or they had this certain thing that meant a lot to them and Perhaps they passed it on to you, or you vicariously picked it up. A little differently, intergenerational trauma, which is really kind of goes hand in hand with vicarious trauma, refers to trauma that is picked up and passed along through the generations. Trauma that was too much for one person and may have been picked up or taken on by another as a way of helping or co-regulating another. And this co-regulation is what we do in families. And so 
as a, a family unit or system, we can, you know, one person takes on the role of helping in this way, another in that way, someone takes on this thing, someone else takes on something else. So I'm just going to pause there and, and see if there's a question, if this is making sense to everyone, is relatable. Okay. Good. And I want to also say that it's important that we take time and pause and notice what is ours, how we're taking things on, and take time to set things down. Um, often, and I'll talk a little about my practices. But often in the morning I come out, this is my studio, it's a converted garage. And um, over there is my yoga mat and my meditation bench. And I'll come out and after some stretching, meditate. And after meditation, I, I do a little practice that is something like this. I just say, look up and say, all my relations, which is, an indigenous sense of that we are all connected and the ancestors are with us. And just to acknowledge my ancestors, my, my sense of place and being connected to land, family, those that are alive. And I just, I picture a bowl and I have my hands, I guess I have to put them up a little like this for you to see. But I just imagine that I'm holding a bowl and the bowl kind of contains all that kind of stuff that, you know, I would like to let go of. And I just tip it and I say something like, you know, I would like to just kind of let go of these things. And ancestors, please help me let go. Help me set down what is in the way of my growth that I don't need to be carrying so that I can be fully present, so that I can grow and my capacity of healing and helping and service of others. And I say it in different ways at different times, but it's just a, a, a minute or two of acknowledging, oh, here's stuff that I don't need to carry. Here's stuff that doesn't feel like it's mine. Here's stuff that feels in the way. And I both sort of ask for help and I'm also, you know, setting out my intention to help in the world. And so the wounded healer part here is, and in the handout that you received, it's a little about, you know, self-care and wellness, that how do we take care of ourselves? and I think, you know, sometimes I hear those discussions and for me personally, I hear, you know, oh, we need to take care of ourselves. We need to do these things. And of course I know all this and then, but do I always do it? And so I think sometimes I get caught in, oh, I know all this. And then I have to really reflect, am I actually doing it? Am I taking care of myself? Am I pausing? And I think so much after all these years of doing therapy, so much of this work, especially helping clients toward the end of therapy, is just to help them have good self-care practices. And, and that can be a variety of things. But I think that there are some basic practices around like focusing partnerships, meditation, uh, some sort of movement exercise, whether that's yoga, walking, whatever. And I think if we are engaging in regular practices, it just helps kind of move things, let things go. We're taking care of ourselves. We're in connection with others. And that makes such a difference. Another thing I want to point out before we do an exercise is is the woundedness because I think at all times, or not at all times, 
for all of us, there are times when we do feel wounded, when we take on too much. And historically, I would imagine most of us can acknowledge that there are some wounds in life, some traumas, some things that um, we've had to struggle with. And in my work and in my teaching, one of the things I emphasize is being connected to your own story, being connected to your own wounds, which help you find your own gifts. Because I think wounds and gifts come threaded together. And when we look at our own woundedness, we can also see the kinds of things that helped us get through that, that helped us change, that perhaps this wounding experience initiated us into some way of being bigger, of growing a capacity, of being in touch with something that is more essentially who we are. I think there's another great doorway into initiation, which is those moments of inspiration and awe and bliss that kind of come often spontaneously that open us up and initiate us into a, a bigger sense of who we are. And those can actually be traumatizing too, because they call us to be bigger in some way that can be a little scary. Sometimes we say, oh, wow, that is amazing. That's such, uh, that's so wonderful. And I'm not quite ready for that today. I think I'll, I'll get to that next week because growing our capacity challenges us to come up to those edges where things are unknown. And the unknown can be shaky, whether it's pursuing an unknown that's really feels wonderful or carry some more of that traumatic energy. I think it can go both ways. So one of the points I wanted to make was the woundedness. I mean, if you explore that, if you can be curious about that, you find so much. And I think of a simple Genlin quote that kind of points to this. Gene said, every bad feeling has potential energy toward a more right way of being if you give it space to move toward its rightness every bad feeling i think we notice the body says hey there's pain here there's emotional pain there's a bad feeling it, it gets us to pay attention and if we pay attention there is also the more right way there is also the the life forward energy there intertwined because the, the bad feeling is pointing to how something got derailed or stuck. And in that stuckness, it is the whole situation as we can feel and experience through a felt sense of the way forward. Boy, I could just talk all day and it's still early. Let's do an exercise. First, maybe just a qu any questions? Okay, I'm gonna guide us in an exercise and then we can do a little discussion. So, and you have a copy of this exercise and if you didn't get the attachment, um, we'll get it to you. So this is, and it helps, I guess, if you have a piece of paper. So if you can have just a blank piece of paper, that's helpful. Okay. So I encourage you to just be relaxed and, and to feel your feet on the floor and your seat in the seat. Notice your hands and what they're touching. Just noticing your breath. I'm going to read and say some things. And I encourage you to just follow your, your curiosity. And there's perhaps kind of two places you can look for something that's vicarious. One would be in your family growing up. Another that would be much sort of... Uh, 
simpler would be in, in some way something you're dealing with now particularly maybe a client and and how there's a client that um you know you feel some sense of overwhelm you feel like there's something there that is more than really feels like yours and vicarious trauma is often the sense of um that there's a quality or feel that just seems like it doesn't fit or it's too much or some part of it points to the current situation but there's much more there that doesn't really make sense with the current situation the first thing is just to find something and we can kind of let our curiosity take us to perhaps our family of origin or perhaps working with a client and it's really about finding some emotional quality that's been hanging around something that feels like I don't quite get this it feels too much I know that you know there's something familiar there's perhaps something that does feel like it's mine but there's something more there and it could be some piece of shame or depression or anger it can be some sort of emotional quality that has been around a long time that goes back to your family and maybe you feel it now because of a particular client you're working with or situation I'm just gonna raise your hand if you need a little more time finding something okay so take a minute there We're looking for something that feels too big doesn't seem to fit feels a little overwhelming there's a little shaky or confused maybe you've been noticing you've been kind of making up stories about situations like why am I making up this story why am I arguing with someone it can just be something that feels like a too much quality do we still need a little more time you all good okay so you've found something and and part of it is to begin to notice is this all mine or is there some way you can begin to differentiate oh this aspect is mine but there's a quality here that is from someone else or another time and notice as you sit with and, and trying to get a felt sense of this piece of something perhaps it's a something that's been following you around for some time what is that like in your body is it familiar when do you first remember feeling this something where were you do you have a sense of what was happening there was there someone else there with you so trauma often happens in relationship with others and it often involves relational bonds and this is why we tend to take on trauma because we're helping someone we're helping someone in a situation that is overwhelming and certainly when we're little kids we don't consciously recognize this so here's what I would like you to do you have a piece of paper the piece of paper represents the whole situation the whole situation that you're sitting with that perhaps you have a felt sense of or at least notice an emotional quality of while you're asking yourself how much of this belongs to me and how much belongs to someone else 
you know, take your piece of paper in your hands and be guided by your own felt sense and rip the paper in a way that tears it into what feels like it's yours and what feels like it's someone else's. And there's no right or wrong, of course. There's just getting a sense of, oh, like this whole situation, it's not all mine. And then kind of look at those pieces of paper. Does that feel right? Does it feel like, oh, this, this, yeah, I get it. Like this feels right. Or is there a sense of the piece that you, that is yours? Does it feel like there's more that you would like to tear off about that? Does it feel like that is all of yours? Or you would like to tear a little more off? Or recently one person said, oh, I think a little more of this is mine. And they tore off from the other piece of paper and added to theirs. But it's just a sense of getting perhaps the proportion, a little more sense of rightness there. And with some things, you know, it, it really, I think my experience is people discover, oh, a lot of this really isn't mine. I've been holding it for someone. I've been carrying it. So has everyone had a chance to rip their paper? Raise your hand. I think, okay. And so... Looking at the piece that is yours, there are a few options. I would like you to sense what you would like to do with that. And looking at the part that you um, ripped off that isn't yours, I would like you to think of, in, in, more importantly, what you would like to do with that. Like that piece that isn't yours, what would it feel right to do with that piece of paper? Would it feel right to, um, you know, just crumple it up and throw it away, to shred it, to burn it, to place it someplace, to bury it, to use your imagination, to put it somewhere? How would you set that down? And if it's hard to set it down or it doesn't feel right to set it down, that's fine. But what that means is you probably need a little more time to spend with it. And you could do things like do a little more focusing about this or maybe a little writing because things don't, you know, they may not feel right to just set down right away. And especially when these, um, you know, trauma is so connected to other people, we might need to take a little time really processing and learning a little more of how this is connected to a certain person, a certain relationship. We might want to explore more about that before we set it down. So, you know, the setting it down may not happen today, but I encourage you to to set it down in some way eventually. Because if we don't kind of process it and take that next step, we may have a little more of an understanding, but we may not be really allowing that to separate from our own body. So just notice that there's some options there. How would you set that down? How would you place that? Where would you put that? I've had people in workshops back in the day when they would actually come here. They wanted to put it in the compost bin. Some people have me shred it. Some people like to take it home and burn it. You can use your imagination and place it someplace. But to do that in a way that gives you some space between you and it. <laughs> 